Okay, we have a couple guests today, Mr. Cortese and Dr. Holt, and they're going to be discussing the programs and mission of FreshStartInternational.org, which is to coordinate services that exist formerly incar incarcerated individuals with successful reentry after incarceration here in Arizona. Gentlemen, uh, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity for us to come and speak to you. Um, when I was first contacted uh, to speak, uh, I, I immediately replied, what am I going to speak on? And, and the individual came back to me and said about Fresh Start. And my immediate response is then we should have Dr. Holt there because this is the vision of Dr. Holt. It has existed within him for many, many years. He, he started with little clinics at, at the church and it has just grown and exploded over the last three years since uh, it was brought to the community center. Um, I was brought on three years ago when that was just the inception of the first program and uh, I didn't know anything about Fresh Start. And then I started to hear Dr. Holt speak and him speak about um, people who come from a disenfranchised group that most people don't really consider often and, and yet alone on a daily basis. And, and this gentleman was able to apply his life and his vision uh, so that people that had a justice involved past could have a future where that wasn't involved in it. And um, for the sake of full transparency, Myself, I have served over 28 years in the Arizona State Prison System. Over the last seven years and over the last three years working with Dr. Holt, we've been able to expand this program to get back into the prisons, not only the state prisons, but the federal prisons and the release center and the probation and the parole departments. And uh, Dr. Holt is just blowing this up. And, and for a person like me coming from my past to hear someone speak like he spoke uh, about us and and about us having a future and about us being valued and and about the importance of us having uh, the resources available to us so that we can deal with the issues that had originally put us in position to put us in there. You know, when I first went to Fort Tucson and started there, I was in charge of Care Portal, which was the foster care program. And we see seven to eight out of 10 kids that become part of the correction system when they become sort of part of that system. And then you start to notice that the kids that are living in poverty and in these more impoverished neighborhoods that are more filled with people of color, you're seeing a higher incarceration rate. And I'm seeing it from the side of behind the walls. And he saw it from this side, knowing that us behind the walls, we're going to come back out. And uh, he he has given us and most everybody in the prison system now because we talk about it constantly on the radio show, and we're we're always talking to those who are incarcerated now to prepare them for the day that they will be released and let them know there are people here that care and there are people that care about programs that are going to give them a future and a hope and that's what we that's what i have found in dr holt and i'm just going to let him run with it because this is i i i i don't follow him i run after him because he is moving through the country and, and this is international. It's going to grow to that because this man is just a fire plug for us and for our futures. God bless you. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, let me let Dr. Holt talk to you. All right. Uh, thank you so kindly. Uh, good, after, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for allowing us to come. Um, truly, we are excited. Thank you, Tom, uh, for that a great introduction. Remind me to give you your fifty dollars uh, sometime this afternoon for that great introduction. Um, but anyhow, uh, great, great to see everyone. Uh, thank you for that great introduction, Tom. Tom is most definitely integral in our work and our movement. 
And we do see it as a movement, not just some organization. My name is Dr. Damon Holt. I'm a traumatologist and doctor of alternative medicine. So one of the big reasons I got into this as well is my research on what does trauma, what does prison do to the brain of inmates? And so that really kind of like opened the door when I began to look at uh, trauma. Uh, prison most definitely is extremely traumatic and many inmates come out not just having a felony, but having uh, paranoia, having PTSD, having depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and all kinds of psychiatric disorders. So that's how we got into it off of research I did uh, called uh, the traumatization of incarceration. So just give you a little bit on that note. But I am the founder and CEO of, um, of a Fresh Start International. We started at my church June, 20, uh, June of 2019, grabbing a few resources and agencies together. And then I realized this is way bigger than what I've ever thought. And uh, rightfully so. America, um, we incarcerate more individuals um, in our federal state prisons than any country in the world, between two to three million people. And most definitely when we look at black and brown communities and poor communities, those numbers are even staggering. Um, this is also an issue with uh, our youth, our at-risk youth. School to prison pipeline is certainly real. And I always say that if you don't keep kids behind books, just the system, we'll put them behind bars. Um, and so... Um, Started this work in 2019, COVID came in 2020, so it gave me a few years to really, really reimagine what I need to be doing. And I came to the conclusion that I needed to do something big, robust, and cutting edge. And so I created the ultimate one-stop shop called the Fresh Start Expo. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it is by fact the ultimate one-stop shop. It is our largest public safety event um, in our city. Laura Conover, our county attorney, says this is her favorite day. Uh, the Fresh Start Expo is her favorite day um, of the year. Um, and so in a nutshell, we help people to deal with their legal issues. We help people to find employment, find housing. Um, and now this is also a homelessness population as well. So we also see some intersectionality of some of our other issues that we're seeing in our communities. And we also see veterans as well who went across uh, boundary lines to fight for our country and come back and can't find housing, can't find uh, employment, all those things. So those are also an issue. And so we came from my church in 2019 to now the Tucson Convention Center, and I create mobile courts. Um, and so we have a live courts. So I have judges from every jurisdiction. I have our city courts. I bring our justice courts, our superior courts, our juvenile courts. I bring our county attorney's office with prosecutors, Megan Page office with public defenders. Um, I also have Andy Silverman with law students. And so we come together and create this ultimate largest legal uh, clinic um, in our city. And we're hearing live cases. And so I remember requesting that judges would put down their robes, put down their gavels, and leave the courthouse and come to the main house where people are really at in the community. And they actually did it. Um, our first year in October 2020, we served 400 people. We grew from October 2020 to October 21 to 1,000 people. Um, and then um, 2022, 1,000 people, excuse me. They announced this year, we're getting to October 23, and we're expecting to see 2,000 people. Every year we grow. Um, and we have been, and this is the reason why we grow. We grow because we actually create a one-stop shop where inmates do not, former inmates do not have to go to 50 different places to get help. They can come to one place and they actually have just about everything they would ever need. So according with the courts, we also have our legal system. We have felony-friendly employment. We have felony-friendly housing. Uh, we offer behavior health, uh, substance abuse, mental health, primary care, all is at the table. This is all going on um, at the same time. Now, let me tell you what we have been able to do successfully. Uh, one, we've been able to uh, squash warrants. People who have had pending warrants can come to Fresh Start. We will have the city judges and the justice of the peace there uh, to help people to squash their pending warrants. That means those are less people going to the county jail. Now, Dr. Hope, why is the county jail a concern? I'm glad you asked me, and I'm going to tell you for free. This is the issue. We are now dealing with an issue to where you probably 
will die in our county jails because we are having so many in custody deaths, unexplained um, deaths, and there's absolutely no type of uh, remedy of fixing that issue. So that's a concern. So many people need to stay out of our county jail as possible, and we need to have many uh, more alternatives to incarceration to help people uh, stay with their families, continue to work, keep their car, because when you lose your car, you get incarcerated in a county jail, and you can't afford to bail yourself out. We pretty much creating poverty. People are getting evicted. They're getting the car repossessed. Their families are falling apart. One of the things we've been able to do is, again, we've been able to squash warrants. We've been able to have, we have people that had thousands and thousands of dollars of court fees and fines and had to juggle, do I pay the mortgage or do I pay these fees? And obviously most people are going to pay the mortgage, keep that roof over their head, but now they got a pending warrant and now they got some type of ramification with the legal system. Well, at Fresh Start, they can come to Fresh Start and we will have the judges, and we have reduced $8,000 of court fees and fines to only $200 in community service. I mean, so amazing things like that. Um, we have people suspended driver's license, believe it or not. You have more people driving illegally than you think. And there's a lot of people been driving illegally for years without a valid driver's license. And guess what? They can come down to the ultimate one-stop shop, the Fresh Start Expo, and we will help them get their driver's license reinstated. I mean, I mean, I can go on and on and tell you how we have helped felons that have a felony record that have not voted in 20 years since this is a democratic movement. This is very important to you guys because 200,000 200, felons is disenfranchised to vote in this state. So that is really, really huge to be working in something like what we do because we're working tirelessly uh, to help those disenfranchised uh, people with felony backgrounds to get their voters' rights back. And so we've been able to help people get their voters' rights back so they're able to vote in the next election. Um, we are now taking advantage of the new back, uh, the new uh, legislation that took place uh, called Seal Your Records Law. Um, and so now that they can uh, seal their records, um, so when they, if they apply for Raytheon or they play, apply for Google or they apply for anything, these employers now cannot go back and uh, look in their background and disqualify them and dis disenfranchise them from a job. I mean, so there's so many different things that uh, we've been, been able to do with Fresh Start, and those are just some of the things um, that we're doing. Uh, but we always say the mistake should only be a life lesson and not a life sentence. And felony, felony backgrounds is giving inmates and former inmates a life sentence. You can complete six years in prison. You can complete 10 years in prison. You can complete 20 years in prison. And even when you're done completing your entire sentence, including parole and probation, that felony still follows you for the rest of your life. So it's still giving uh, formerly incarcerated people uh, um, a felony issue. Now, this is the whole big thing. The whole big thing is you cannot arrest and you cannot convict your way to a solution. Public safety is not about over-policing communities. We see it doesn't work. We create disproportionate numbers and disparities among poor communities and communities of color time in and time out. The best way to really promote public safety is to provide rehabilitation, to provide education to provide substance abuse if they have addictions issues to provide mental health support if they're struggling with depression and schizophrenia some type of psychiatric disorder or post-traumatic stress disorder these are the things that we are doing to uh, enhance our city, to bring healing back to our village, to restore families. You better believe uh, children's outcomes are better when, when they have a two-parent household at the house and that father is at home. And, you know, all of those different things we see in the dad and education and juvenile justice, all that is important of stabilizing our families. So I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, but we are excited. We are coming back October 21st in just a few weeks from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the TCC, better known as the Tucson Convention Center. Um, and we are thankful for our important partners like uh, Mayor Romero, who has been um, an integral part of making sure that the city support us. Uh, Mike Ortega, our city manager, uh, Loa Conover, our county attorney. Um, our presiding, Pima County presiding judge, um, um, Bergen, Judge Bergen, our presiding judge. I mean, so they, we, countless supporters have seen this work and seen that this is the right way to go. Now, let me take, give you two takeaways I can say. Number one is free. 
We don't charge anybody. Um, and so that's amazing. And then too, I don't know if this has impressed you or not, but we have absolutely have not arrested not one person. Absolutely not one person. One out one person have come to our event, have been brought into custody or have been, or have been arrested. So uh, we are on the move. This is our movement. Um, it's not just an organization. Um, and again, we're here to help people get on their feet. And if you have members in your community, members in your church, members in your family and neighborhoods that need to deal with their legal issues, um, that need, that want to get their voters' rights, we can help people get their voters' rights. You know, there's some other things you got to have as the uh, certificate of absolute discharge and and uh, keep your nose clean for two years. Um, for the city of records lost three years, um, there's some extra uh, details, but certainly we are able to help. Um, and if we can't handle everything that day, we try to do most of everything that day. So we don't send people to court, but if we do, and there are times we do, we can, uh, create a court date and send people, uh, so that they can get the help. So, um, Fresh Start, we're excited. Uh, Fresh Start has been so successful. We're now looking at Fresh Start Phoenix. 2024 and fresh start 2025 in Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, we're on the move. The needs are there and we're doing mm -hmm. all we can to create as many partners as possible to get behind this work. Um, and we're, we're ready to rock and roll and, and help everyone that deserves a new beginning to get a fresh start. And you can also tune in to our radio show every Saturday morning on 106 The Groove, where is the Fresh Start Show and podcast. And so, and that is a platform where we actually speak uh, to truth the power. We actually challenge policymakers and politicians and leaders to really be serious about prison reform and justice reform. So thank you for your time. Um, and we're, we're ready to rock and roll for our city to, this year. Great. Would you be willing to take some questions? Sure. Great. Number one, uh, Karen Leeson, Leeson would like to know, uh, are you bringing help to those who have drug or alcohol disorders? And uh, Craig would like to know uh, if you're working toward uh, non-cash bail. Yeah, um, so there are some things that we're working on, um, and obviously this is a heavy lift. It's a lot of work, um, and there's a lot of powers that be that likes to keep in people incarcerated, even private mm -hmm. prisons. So we are also dealing with some systemic issues and some systemic systems that are in place to fight against our work. Uh, one of them is bail reform, um, and that is something that we have to partner with other people, other leaders um, that's willing to join our cause. Another thing we're looking at in Fresh Start is wrongful. We're going to create a division called wrongful convictions. We have too many people sitting in prison that shouldn't be because they didn't, they, because they black or brown, poor communities or couldn't afford legal counsel. And so they pleaded out. Um, so that they wouldn't do 25. So they took five instead of 25, but they really shouldn't even did the five. So we have many of those types of situations too. And another thing we're adding to, we're looking to do in next year is to partner with the AG's office, our attorney general's office, and bring child support reform where we can help individuals who have pending <clears throat> because of child support. So yeah, those are some of the additional things that we're looking at. Okay, and Mike, if, you have some I other questions? Touch on the if I could touch on the voting rights, um, I'm one of the people that will be getting my voting rights back. Um, and and I haven't voted since uh, the presidential election back in 1980. Um, so it's, it's absolutely incredible. And again, I say, Dr. Holt has always given me a voice. And now that voice is going to be part of the political process and it's 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 a it's a moment of pride it's it, it's so much caught up in that and and you know uh, as far as the other question on the drug and alcohol disorders um since we've been able to go back into the prisons and we do the uh release orientation at the Pima county release center um, they have given us the opportunity to bring the resources that would offer all of those things to people that are back entering Pima County. And we do that every Tuesday. Uh, and, and we have numerous resources there for drugs, for alcohol, for behavioral health. Um, and, and that's one of the things that has just blown up because we're able to go into the prisons now. Dr. Holt and I are going out to speak at the Wilmont prison at, at the beginning of November. Uh, because they are interested in us bringing the resource and job fair into the prison itself, because everybody at that institution is like 18 months or shorter to getting out. 
so we can help them get prepared for their release. And, and it's, it's just, when, when you feel valued, you, you want to do more. And, and, uh, Dr. Holt has given the opportunity to many people to feel valued. And, and that day, if I could take you through just a visual of fresh start, um, some of the people that walk through those doors don't look like you and I. And uh, the first thing they meet is wonderful people at intake. And then they set them up with these uh, stylists or barbers who are going to cut their hair. And then they're going to go from there over to an area where another organization gives them clothes so that when they turn that corner going down that hallway that has all of those felony friendly employers, the guy that came through the door looking at the ground and when he sat there with that woman and his shoulders started going back and his chin started going up and then he went and got clothes and new clothes looking good. And he went and turned that corner and that man's shoulders were back and his chin was up and he felt like he was valued. So the man that walked down that hallway was not the man that walked in the door. Because when we start pouring into the people that are coming back into our community, it changes what they're going to do in the community. And, and I can attest to that me personally, because that's what I do. I pour back into that community every day because of what has transpired, what we are able to do every day. Thank you, Tom. Oh, uh, yeah. Shirley Money has a question. Uh, she wants to know uh, what your funding sources are for this organization. Mm -hmm. um, right now, our funding sources is anybody wants to give. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we don't have a specific, uh, well, we did get one small grant from the city um, to help us, but most of it is just, um, you know, different organizations uh, that see the, not just see the vision, but see the impact already and saying, you know, we really need to be making this bigger. Um, and I need more funding sources because right now you got to think we're about to serve uh, 2000 people and I have a 100% volunteer team. And right now to really build bigger capacity and sustainability, I need to, I need to raise money to, to have, uh, you know, two paid positions where I can have an administrator uh, to help me with the day to day and have a field coordinator as we're going out doing this work. So, um, yeah. I can always stand. I need that money like ASAP, especially going into uh, next year when we're talking about doing two fresh starts a year now. We're going to have one in Tucson. We're going to have one in Phoenix. And, you know, Phoenix is a whole nother kind of animal. Um, but, yeah, so those are our funding sources. So pretty much, you know, any organization I want to give, we do have a... Uh, a annual uh, fund fundraising breakfast in all in August that we have here at uh, at uh, St Andrew's Presbyterian Church, um, and so we have all of our partners and whatnot that give. So yeah, that's our funding source. And, well, it, and do, as uh, an organization, we're only we're only eighteen but months old, so we're still a baby. Well, I invite you to put any uh, fundraising or uh, organizational links in the chat so people can uh, can uh, take advantage of those. Uh, looks like, uh, 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 Susie Anderson would like to know, uh, you seem to have a strong religious background. Does Fresh Start require or urge people to become active or join the church, uh, for which you work? Oh, and no, that's too that's, women do you serve? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, do, I, am I a man of faith? Yes. Am I ashamed of it? Heck no. Um, I most definitely, um, is a follower of Christ, but I, but we do not be, we do not proselytize people, uh, to make people, uh, become Christian in order for us to provide services. Um, it's to whosoever need those services, um, is who we incline to help. So there's no pressure or anything like that, that you have, that we evangelize, um, every person that we provide services <laughs> with. Now, do we have people who are, uh, Christian and things of that nature? Obviously. So, um, but yeah, you can be even an atheist and we're going to help you. So. Amen. And uh, Karen Gleason would like to know if we can uh, donate clothing as well, if you accept the clo clothing donations. Man, look, bring it all. I can tell you right now, bring everything plus the kitchen sink, uh, because we are really trying to bless our city and bless uh, family members. And uh, we need people to have, we need people to be job ready. Um, because we do have felony, felony uh, friendly employment that wants to give 
uh, people, um, a fresh start as far as employment. So yes, uh, interview clothes, yep. making them f- and clothes that they they that they can embrace that they're not ashamed of that makes them give them a sense of pride uh, about being able to put food on the table and get a a, 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 a second chance on employment and a career. So yeah, so whatever you have, feel free to donate. We have an organization that has an, uh, they have an abundance of men's clothing for business, but they don't have very much for women. And, and that we are in desperate need of so that the women can look just as good going to, to those employers as the men do. Hey, Mike, uh, your hands up. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions uh, of my own. Um, in terms of uh, the what, what we, I'm a former prosecutor, actually, so I'm pretty familiar with these issues. We call these uh, sorts of uh, disabilities and uh, the uh, people who are formerly incarcerated suffer collateral consequences. Um, what are the biggest uh, priorities for your organization in, in uh, pushing reform uh, for collateral consequences for former felons? Uh, and what are the biggest harms that you see as a result of these collateral consequences? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think I have to look at it. I have to look at multiple lenses. The first lens is we gonna we are going to fail in recidivism if we do not equip people who are coming out of prison. And that's not just jobs, and that's just not with housing. As a, I'm a traumatologist. I'm a trauma doctor. So. Um, Sometimes mentally and emotionally, people are, just don't have the readiness because you've been confined in that jail cell and treated like an animal for so many years. Yeah. And you have dissociated um, for so many years. When you get released, you just, it's not easy to turn that switch back on from shifting from animal-like culture to coming back to humanity. So one of the things, too, is I have to look at mental, mental illness um, as a serious thing. Uh, thing to consider. Uh, people, obviously, after you have so much trauma, how do people get into to addictions? Well, they start coping with different drugs to help them cope with the trauma. Now you got two problems. One, you never dealt with the root cause of your behavior, which is the trauma. And now you're using drugs um, to cope with your pain and your trauma. So now you have an addiction issue. So we also have to look at substance abuse as one thing. Um, another lens is, I think we just have to be very frank and understand that policies have to change and legislation have to change. And so one of those things, when we talk about those collateral consequences is those collateral consequences are in place because of people of power. So now we're going to have to speak truth to power who created those collateral uh, consequences and start doing those reforms and start looking at, look, the data is there, no matter how much you overly police in certain communities, regardless of how many times you disenfranchise people to vote, um, regardless of how many times that we keep arresting and convicting people, especially with mandatory sentencing. I mean, so there's a lot of extra stuff. You're a prosecutor, so you know more than I do. You're the lawyer that that hasn't worked. And we certainly got to start looking at doing something different. Yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest perversions of uh, disenfranchising former felons is, uh, you know, it sort of takes a lot of these issues out of the public square, out of the discussion, because Nobody wants to talk about them because they don't understand them. They don't think about them. It's not a priority for them because they've never been incarcerated, so they don't think about it. And, you know, like you said, 200,000 people in Arizona can't vote because of this. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a huge population that's being underserved in terms of their their needs for civil rights and for policy and for, yeah. for reform. So, yeah. yeah, thank you for the work that you do on that. I appreciate it. Um, I did have another question. Uh, um, as to cash bail, uh, it's my understanding that uh, cash bail mainly impacts people in the jails who are pre-trial detention. Uh, what kind of work do you do with people who are in the jails as opposed to in prison, pre-trial versus post-trial, post-conviction? Um, so we're trying to get there. Um, <laughs> just, just so much work. Um, but that is in our trajectory uh, to address that. And so also partnering with other organizations. I know the NAACP here in, our, in, in Tucson is really trying to do something really big and robust um, into bail reform and looking at uh, some issues. But we do know that if you are poor in this community and if you're from communities of color and indigenous communities, 
uh, the the data is really staggering and concerning in regards to uh, people who are sitting in jail. I mean, I'm African American, obviously, and I represent what four or five percent in the county, but I over represent in the county jails about twelve to thirteen percent. Sometimes I've seen fifteen percent. I think that's just depending on what wave of the year, what quarter of the year that there's just a big influx of people going to jail. But most of those people who cannot afford an attorney that that cannot bail out has to sit you know, in jail for four, six, eight months. And some people actually sat there for a year. And actually when they trial come, uh, they're, they're not guilty. But now they spent a year uh, being incarcerated in the county jail and they pretty much lost everything they worked hard for. And that's where the injustice um, is coming from. So we are seeing that there is a need for us to start looking at uh, ways to push bail reform. And again, like I say, we can always stand to get the help um, and people to partner with us when it comes to policy, because that's my angle is once we help people with legal issues on this backside, this back end, now we got to stop being reactive, start being proactive in regards to looking at policy change in areas that impact such as what you just said, you know, bail reform. Thank you, Dr. Holt. Okay, Andrea has a question. Hi, good morning. This. Uh... Sounds like a very valuable organization. A question for either of you gentlemen: uh, What do you, what do you define as success, and how many of your clients are successful? And also, just a comment: Dr. Holt mentioned trauma, and lately I've begun to think trauma has is causing a lot of damage in our society, and not just among people who've been to jail. Yes, right. Yeah, um, Tom, you can chime in too um, on some of this. So, uh, so let me co go, let me go on the trauma side. So you're exactly right. So uh, most of my work is in in education, uh, foster care, and I'll, I'm also uh, one of the, I'm the primary trauma expert for the Arizona Supreme Court. So I actually work on creating trauma informed courts with judges in our 15 counties. Um, and trauma is really serious. You're exactly right because what we see is that. When trauma, and the root word trauma means wound or injury um, from our lens. And so when people have been traumatized or we use that frame, it means that there's some type of life event or tragedy have impacted their brain to where it actually rewires the brain. And that creates issues with behavior. And so that's what I explain in, in our education system, why kids are not learning, why grades are decreasing, why are kids suspended and behaviors all over the place. It's coming from that trauma. So exactly right. So when people, when trauma, the brain has been traumatized, it impacts the whole person, it impacts the body, and it certainly impacts behavior. A lot of people that are in prison have their pre-trauma, right? Um, and that explains why we see some of the behaviors that now we had to, unfortunately, because of statues and laws on the books, we have to criminalize it. Um, and now when they come to prison, now there's something what we call in our my field and the science of traumatology is secondary traumatic stress, secondary trauma, or SDS, which simply means that there is a thing called secondary trauma. I've already been traumatized since I've been 13, and now I'm in prison getting re-traumatized, and then I come out and I'm traumatized again because I don't have any resources to even restart my life, so I go do something dumb and stupid and go right back into prison because of institutionalization of trauma. So you're right. All of that stuff is very, very important. Um, and to answer your question, how do I define as a as a founder? Um, how do I define success? I I define success as when uh, when people have uh, when systems has failed people, um, and they feel like they have no hope, and they feel like the only alternative to get. Three, two to three meals a day and have a roof of your head. And if that's prison, and if I can keep you out of that, then that's what I consider success. When I have someone that got $8,000 of court fees and fines and they got to juggle between paying the mortgage or paying court fees and fines, if I can reduce those uh, fees and fines by thousands of dollars and keep you out of prison and keep you in, in home with your wife and your kids and stabilizing your family, those are the things that I consider are major successes um, with, 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 with Fresh Start. My final thing I say is Fresh Start also I consider success is because of the fact that I have
have people from the liberal side, conservative side, Democratic side, and Republican side, and I have never had nobody fight or had another, I never had a deliberation about politics. People come together to make this happen because this is an American issue. And as long as we can keep it on that focus and focus on impacting our communities and families and keeping people out of prison and seeing the chief of police come to our event and be amazed and say, wow, this is crazy. And have our county attorney, who's our prosecutor, to say we want to do all we can to make sure that we're adjudicating cases and keeping people with their families. That is just simply amazing. So when we're seeing things like that and we have never arrested nobody, no one has been hauled off uh, in shackles or handcuffs or being booked. Yeah, that's what I've considered, in my opinion, how we see success. Great. Uh, personally, Lee has a question. I, I, my personal success um, is that I see the room filled with people that care about people that have been incarcerated. To me, that's a success. To me, it's a success that we go to the Tucson Convention Center on a Saturday and we have judges that take off their robes on their day off and they spend the day there making sure that a person has a chance at a future. And then we get like 40 plus resource tables and there's two to three to four people at each table. And I'm looking around this room and I'm seeing two to three to four people at each table that have taken this day yeah. so that I could have a better day tomorrow. And then I turn down this hallway and these, these it's lined with all of these felony friendly employers and all of these uh, city organizations and, and, and nonprofits that offer mental health, behavioral health these things why is that important as as far as a scores are concerned mine's off the charts i started at a very early age being molested being abused being beaten uh all sorts of uh, addictions resulted from that and as dr holt was saying the problem wasn't the addictions once you start to deal with the traumas those addictions start to feel away fall away and, and one thing that I do know after 28 plus years in prison and after hearing thousands upon thousands of stories from different men that I was incarcerated with for over 28 years, trauma is the most prevalent thing in all of our lives from prison. And that for me, first and foremost, has to be dealt with. That has to be an opportunity for individuals who have never spoken about it to be before to have a safe place to do that. Thank you and, for sharing and, that, Tom. I appreciate that. Uh, one clarification I'd like to ask is, uh, what is the role of the judges here uh, for the people who are participating? Why are they taking off their robes and why are they there? What are they doing uh, during the, <laughs> the, the, the process? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Um, the reason the reason why is because our court systems have tried to do uh, something internally called warrant day and warrant day have been pretty much a failure. And they've admitted that that no matter how many times they try to have warrant day, people are intimidated uh, to go to court. People actually think that courts is hood with them, setting them up so that they can show up and put handcuffs on them. Right. So what makes Fresh Start important is you say, well, why is judges taking off the rug? Because they need to be community judges. People need to see judges in a different light. And also people see Fresh Start as home court advantage for the community. It's a safe space. Um, and we already have judges and our county attorneys. We've already have had a agreement that we're not trying to arrest people. We're not trying to set people up because that's what will make Fresh Start a failure. Once yeah. people, once that trust factor is gone and people feel like Fresh Start is a setup event and people are going to get hauled off, yeah. um, that's what's going to, that's what's going to happen. And that's going to impact us on a negative. Um, so just, just to be clear, the, the judges are actually quashing warrants and waiving fines and stuff like oh, that yeah. at, in yeah. their official roles, despite the fact that they're not wearing, wearing <laughs> robes or sitting on a bench. No, yeah, but, I made that clear earlier. So, uh, yeah. no, we're actually... Uh, squashing warrants in real time. In right. real time. We're not sending people to court. They're not getting court dates. Say, come to Fresh Start, and then we see you in October, see you in December 12th. No, we're we're dealing with real court cases live right then and there. People are walking away saying, 
they squash it. I'm good. I mean, yeah. you hear the testimonials right then and there. So when I'm using that that visual that they're taking off their robes, they're literally taking off their robes. And Judge Bergen had no robe last year. He had on the dress, he had on some some dress pants, dress shoes, and a dress shirt, and a regular table, no bench. Just people coming up to the judge face to face, one on one, and dealing with those issues. And so it's, and then you actually have to come to actually experience it. Like it's like. It's like legal slash Disneyland at the same time. You feel <laughs> joy, you feel happiness. You just see the joy that that happens when people feel like they had no hope, and the only result was go back to prison, man. You know, and so to keep people from that, and also see the judge is saying, and then we have a six minute documentary as well that we can send to you guys, and the and Judge Bergen is saying. This is this is our this is worth our court's time. This is an amazing event, and our judges love to participate every year. Well, great, Lee. You have a question. Uh yes. Uh, oh, I thought Andrea did too. Well, I'll, I'll do mine quickly because I Andrea just, had hers. Um, I um, I missed or I didn't quite follow. What do people do? with your organization if they want to recover their vote, voting rights after a prison stay, do they? Um, so one of the services we offer is called uh, restoration of rights. Um, mm -hmm. Now there's something you have to do. Number one, you have to be 100% uh, done with parole or probation. And after two years of being released, you can um, get your certificate absolute um, uh, discharge from the DOC. Um, and once you do that, then there's some paperwork that you have to um, complete. So we have some law students, including lawyers, that help people go through that process and do the paperwork. And uh, once all of that is done, then you get a court date and you go see the judge at a superior court. And that judge, you know, will make, you know, make the, the, the a ruling, you know, to uh, get your, your rights back restored. Usually you don't get your rights to bear arms as far as carrying a fire, but you can get your, your voters' rights back. And that's through your group? Do they talk to you through your group or is it? Oh, yeah. So we're one of them. Our, you know, we're the primary because we're probably about the most famous one because of our branding. But we do have uh, Andy Silverman and his group. Um, are doing rights and restorations kind of like on a bi-weekly basis. Megan Page, the public defenders, I think every Wednesday um, is offering these services as well at the uh, public defender's office every Wednesday as they're doing their legal clinic. And they're also doing the seal your records law too. So we that's a new legislation that was finally released in January 1 of this year. But you have to be done with everything um, after three years uh, with nonviolent convictions and we, you can uh, qualify uh, to get your records 100% totally sealed. The only uh, institutions that can see, we still see uh, your background will be law enforcement in, uh, communities and courts. But other than that, uh, civilian entities, uh, from what they're saying, now this is new legislation, so we got to work out the kinks. So yeah. on paper, they're saying that they should not be able to see into people's backgrounds. Exactly. I have one other question. Andy too. Silverman is a oh, long-time sorry. professor at the U of A who runs a legal clinic there. Yeah, I remember I mentioned his name to you back when I was asking about this. Um, I have another uh, question. Chicago or Illinois, it's probably Chicago, has done away with cash bails because that is such a problem. People can't raise money if they're in jail. They can't work. Um, do you know about that or have you heard of that? Um, I've heard a little bit about it, and they're not the only ones. There's some other uh, governmental agencies uh, throughout our country that's really beginning to be really robust in this approach uh, to dealing with cash bail issues. Now, in Arizona, our issue is that, uh, you know, internally, uh, courts and county attorneys can only do so much, um, mm -hmm. but to really put um, a dent into this reform work is we have to get our legislative bodies uh, to really get on board and to create uh, some new, le new legislation to really be uh, cutting edge and robust in regards to, be, to bail reform. To be able to do that, so it's a leg would take the legislature. Yeah, yeah, we need we need statute on the books. Yeah, we need. Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering because it, I didn't quite understand it. 
but I think that it's probably a very good idea. So mm -hmm. maybe we can push the legis when we get those Democrats elected in both houses, we can uh, push for that too. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Okay, thank you. Well, great. Judging okay. judging has been taken away from judges a long time ago. Yeah. With with the with the policies and the, and the laws that that the, and the sentencing structures that they were the way they are, uh, judges have very little leeway as to what they do. You either fit into a category or you don't. Whatever category you fit into, that's the sentence you're going to get. And as far as bond is concerned or bail is concerned, it's the same little checklist that they go through. It's going to be this amount of money. And if you're a person that doesn't have means. You're going to sit in jail for a year to two years to three years, lose everything that you have in life and have to start over, even if you're found not guilty at the end of it. That's, that's criminal. Okay. Okay, we have yeah. two there should be. Okay, great question, Lee and Thomas. Appreciate the input. Uh, also, they asked if uh, there's any uh, liaison or lobbying going on with the state legislature to uh, assist with the development of legislation in this area. Actually, with the new radio show coming on, we are having guests come down from Phoenix that are very influential in that area. And, and uh, Dr. Holt and them are going to start discussions in that area. Good. And what was the radio station again and its call numbers? 106.3 The Groove FM every Saturday morning at 730. We'll bring you new some donuts. That's pretty early. Amen. And if you come out to see us on the 21st, the new radio show will be live at the TCC, and that's 90.1. Wonderful. Well, great. What a, uh, we thank you for uh, all the work you're doing. Uh, lots of great details shared today. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. And uh, thanks so much for uh, giving hope to folks that need it. And uh, we really appreciate that.